there's a stream within walking distance. Oh, good. Yeah, we no, can. Yeah, we've got. We've got. You know, the whole army, which presumably has like a core of engineers. I think we've got like 20, 30 dudes. Yeah. They can dig. They can dig a trench. It divert the stream. We're not no. diverting a whole <laughs> river. Straight in his front door. Day. <laughs> Hello! Welcome to the Stream of Chaos. We're very glad to have you here. Uh, we stream Call of Cthulhu, and today uh, we are playing Reign of Terror. My name is James, and I am the keeper for this game. Reign of Terror is for Call of Cthulhu 7th edition, and it is a campaign that is set surrounding the French Revolution. I am here, as I always am, with this fantastic crew of people, and let's have them all introduce themselves. Dave, do you want to go first? Hot dog. Um, I am Dave. I am playing Sergeant Thierry Renault. I am a monarchist and I am the sergeant of this band of military investigators in the French army. Excellent. Thank you very much. Of course, monarchist, as we've said before, an excellent thing to be during the French Revolution. And it's only Nothing get went wrong <laughs> with the monarchy. Yeah. Art, do you want to jump in? Hi. Uh, I'm Art. I should turn my web captioner on. <laughs> Hi, I am Art. I now Ooh. have my web captioner on. <laughs> um, and I am playing Joseph Hugel, who is actually uh, Martine Hugel, Joseph's wife, who is disguised as her husband in order to, like, have a job and feed the family. And Martine is being played by Martine's sister, Therese. So, you know, look forward to that confusion when that all happens. Uh, but Hugel is a vivandia of the army, is very good at getting provisions, and very bad with guns. <laughs> Fantastic. And last but not least, Jackson. Oh, <laughs> Jackson is <laughs> completely uh, silent. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm on top of it, you guys. I'm a professional, don't worry. <laughs> Hey, I'm Jackson, and I'm playing Christophe Pressy, um, who has a fishbone constantly stuck in his throat. Christophe As do, as do all the French, of course. Yeah. He is also a young soldier, uh, a young uh, 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 idealist, I guess you could say. Um, what ideals? He's a bit flexible on that, but as long as he's striving for heroism and bravery and becoming the poster boy for all of France, then he's on board. Absolutely. Well, we've been playing for a while now and our uh, investigators are about to do a lot of really exciting things. So I'll give a brief rundown of what's happened so far. But first, I'd like to thank Web Captioner, Sirenscape and Roll20, which are services we use to improve our games. And I'd also like to tell you all about the Call of Cthulhu Classic Kickstarter, which went live a little while ago. You can check it out if you are a fan of the classic Call of Cthulhu uh, supplement that was released way back when, and you want to see where all this madness began. Let's give a brief summary of what's happened so far. Our investigators are members of the French army in the service of the king. While working at the Paris catacombs, moving bodies down from various cemeteries into the catacombs below the city, they were engaged to investigate a murder. After a little bit of running around and discovery, they figured out that this murder was committed by a nobleman called Comte Fenlique. Their commander, Captain Malon, sent them to investigate Fenlique, and they found that Fenlique seems to have some a lot of strange stuff going on. He lives in a house outside of Poissy, this grand mansion where he hosts debaucherous parties. And there's some really blasphemous stuff going on there. For everything from weird statues to the beating of people dressed as royalty to strange violin music that makes your skin crawl to him being able to seemingly open doors as if by magic. Our investigators managed to find some definitive proof that Fenleek was up to no good and as a result have returned and Capitaine Malon has given them the authority to go and arrest the Comte. So we're going to be jumping in today just as the collection of you all get ready to prepare an arrest. 
Quite simply, you will need to supply yourselves. You have a, a battalion of soldiers at your disposal that you can use to approach and surround the house, but their, their uh, application, how they're used, well, Captain Manon seems to have left that up to you. You can get ready to go. And of course, you'll also need to let your families know what's happening. Uh, they may have some opinions on you acting so boldly against a member of the aristocracy, considering that can have some flow on effects. Captain Malone will have also suggested that you go to see the disgraced Dr. Rigaud, who was previously charged with taking care of the Dauphin, the king's son, who passed away. Um, Dr. Rigaud knows about Fenelique and apparently has some information he would like to share with you. Without further ado, then, I'll hand things over to you, the collection of you as you all awaken in your homes. Can you tell us a little bit about what your plans are and also if you've had any difficult conversations <clears throat> with your family and how they reacted? Sorry, what was it? You said Rigo's called for us. When yes. he previously, had he, he, what did he know about the, the Comte previously? He gave, he gave information about the Comte being, you know, a duelist and about, um, he, he's having been in the King's inner circle and the Queen's inner circle. He has had exposure to Comte Fenleek, but he has specifically right. called saying, I have some more information I want to give okay. to you. Okay, cool. Uh, very, very quick, um, like, mechanics question. Please. Have we healed? Um, it will have been uh, a single night will have passed by um, based on your return because you did you went through the night uh, to get back to Versailles. So you've spoken to Capitaine Malon, you've then had a night's rest. So you'll all have healed a single hit point. Uh, but no, you will have not healed to full. Uh, the, the tension on the streets keeps you from recovering entirely. Plus you just had it kind of knot in your back and you really, no matter how much you shifted, you can get comfortable. <laughs> so, so we... Yeah, I actually have one of those right now. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we've ridden back through the night and then rested. So that would put us on like what? The, the party's on Sunday and it's now Saturday or is it Friday still? Was uh, it... it will be Saturday today. Okay, um, so we've got a day of preparations. And you've then... got a day of preparation, and then it's Sunday evening is when you'll want, you'll want to be getting in. So you've got some time. The trip to Poissy is relatively long, and if you want to, you know, move cannons and stuff there, uh, I'm not saying you need cannons. If you want to move a bunch of cannons down there, it'll take a, uh, you know, you'll need horses, and you may, may want to set up camp. You also might want to organize some kind of stealth approach you know, the people in Poissy, if they see a battalion of uh, the king's soldiers approaching. Um, for reference, this, you know, you're, you've probably got about 30 or 40 soldiers under Capitaine Melon that you can use. So that's that's kind of what we're talking about here. I reckon we'll have them. Um, Are they all wearing red? Uh, they would be wearing the... Uh, uh, the, the um, uniform of a french soldier i believe i have an asset of that that i can share if not it is it is bright and it is um it is uh kind of it's not the typical um tricolor because of course that's about to happen the what <laughs> um is <laughs> <laughs> just getting ready for it in the background no 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 okay um, all right, well, I think we also had a private discussion towards the end of the last session because we were told that this Comte was going to be brought to, like, a prison or an asylum or something was the intent. But our concern is that no bars will hold him, so we're more thinking time for a little, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll sort Extra of Extra judicial. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Well, well, absolutely. It would be impossible to just execute a member of the aristocracy. But, but you, if he resists... Uh, yeah. uh, you think that you might have to take matters into your own hands. Capitaine Melon has given you the order to take Fenelique alive, but yeah. sometimes, sometimes you can't follow every order. Yeah. Here is uh, a little picture of some French soldiers uh, that you can see. Um... This oh, is look at them uh, in their little get-ups. Soldiers preparing for the raid. So bright, like colorful so. white <laughs> pants. <laughs> um, yeah, I speak hats. Of course, it's good, white, they'll, they'll be disguised I'm... as bushes until we get closer. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to work out whether or not we have like thirty to forty red shirts with us, or thirty to forty actual soldiers. Oh. <laughs> you've got, you've got actual soldiers here. Okay. They um, might live, is what you're saying. Cannon fodder. Yeah. 
Okay. So, um, so the only other thing was we also talked about because we don't really know what yeah. the Comte's deal is. So where we landed last time was Renault was saying, I'm going to speak with Milan and kind of just get soldiers organized, but Pressy and Hugel, if you can spend any time trying to figure out what it is that we're up against, because knowledge is half the battle. No, and knowing is half the battle. Um, yo, Joe. All right. Um, Fine. Let's do it. Yep. Excellent. So, waking up in your homes, who wants to jump in first? Uh, I yep. can. All right, Open please. On. What's what's the situation? Um, how's how's home life? How's yep. your wife's sister? <laughs> My sister is good. We have a puppy. <laughs> Titu. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you do. Your little your little dog. He, she, it has been called all things, uh, is very well loved <laughs> over the, you know, handful of days we've, we've had them. Um, I think there, there has been like a roundabout conversation about like, so we're going to go storm the house. How did, how did that go down? Do you think? Yeah, I think because we, we spoke last time about Therese being probably like more actively kind of interested in the People's Republic government thingy uh, maybe than like and Hugo is the one that's like yes oh by the way for anyone who does not know Hugo is like massively anti-monarchy because yep. the French kind of took over Brittany and they're not super happy about that a little bit of um, a score point yeah yeah, I don't really like the monarchy. But yeah, um, Hugo's probably more like, yes, but we need to, like, bide our time. We, we don't want to get, you know, arrested and shot for being traitorous to the crown. Like, just hold your... We're, we're, we're all in for this, but let's, like, be subtle about this. Um, so, like, I think, I think Therese is, like, initially kind of excited at the idea that there might be something going down, but then has just like familial concern about Hugo's well-being. Um, Beyond the danger of being involved with the aristocracy, is Therese aware of how literally dangerous your work is? You know, you were in, you were in fights uh, the other night. People were trying to kill you. I feel like it's one of the, okay. So <laughs> everyone here who has a sibling, you know those moments where you're like, I'm going to tell you some stuff. And then we're just not going to talk about it. Like, you know, I know that you know how dangerous it is. And you know that I know that you know how dangerous it is. But neither of us really talk about it because it's easier that way. Like, because it's just not going it, to... You, you can't fix it. There's nothing you can do. You just have to be like, I know what you do is dangerous. I love you. Please don't die. Like, Good that's the, the background. But that, like... You, you can only say that so many times, you know. So I think it's it's that kind of situation where she knows we just... There's no point in talking about it because there's nothing either of us can do. In the same way that, like, I think Hugel knows that Therese does tend to frequent places that in the wrong light and maybe at the wrong time could be seen as, as like, slightly too close to the revolution. Um, but again, like, just kind of goes, look, you're, you're your own free agent. You do what you need to do. Just come back alive at the end of the night. That's all I care about. Therese is exactly as you say, kind of keeping quiet about everything, despite knowing how dangerous things are. Um, she has been straying close to the revolution, but after last session's amazing disguise, was it the session before, was amazing disguise role, her disguise is holding up, um, and she's managing to maintain this deception. We'll ask you one last question. Have you revealed to Therese any of the occult nature of what you saw at Comte Fenelique's mansion? No. No? I think I've just, I've made it clear that what we're doing, well, it is more, it is dangerous. Like, it's it's obviously dangerous full stop, but I've, like, I have sort of definitely had, like, lent on the, like, this is dangerous, maybe more so than just your standard aristocrat, but I haven't specified why, and I think Therese kind of is like even if I asked you wouldn't tell me 
Yeah. As she heads out to get water, Teleus probably gives you some kind of like, um, you know, holy symbol, a, a short prayer for your health. Um, the words may ring slightly hollow, considering just recently you saw a strange corpse dressed as the Pope uh, in the estate. I, I didn't see uh, it. You didn't. You no, are right. No, I didn't see it. I, I know about it, but I didn't see it. <laughs> Very true. Missed yeah. out. Um, yeah, you know, it's a lot of cool. fun. Um, I probably give her like a slightly longer than normal hug and kiss mm -hmm. on the cheek before she leaves and just kind of go. Ties, um, be careful as you go. Huh? I always am, and uh, you be careful too. But she turns and leaves. Um, what will you be doing today, you girl? I think. I will spend some time with Titu, sort of playing and just kind of mentally preparing. And then uh, if this is all happening sort of early in the morning, maybe by night, sort of lunchtime-ish, I'll go in, uh, to where I know Plessis, uh resides with his father, adopted father, I forget. Uh, and both really, <laughs> same thing. Um, and will assist him in the research of what what this is and what we might be able to do to stop it. Okay, perfect. So after spending some time with little Titu, you head out. Um, can you make me a spot hidden check? Yes, I was like looking for my dice. Like, <laughs> Where is it? What? Uh, are we just very quickly? Are we doing advancements for last session? Yes, you will do. I already you, did. You will do okay. your advancements, please. Case, advance away. I will advance. I will advance my spot hidden before I roll it. Let's see whether I. Way nice. That is a good thing to have. Uh, so I'm going to add two to my spot hidden before I roll again. No, oh, well, yeah, every point counts. Really bloody does. Uh. Alright, and now I will roll spot. Roll seventy two. Yeah. <laughs> Way Nicely done. So as you're heading down uh the streets of Paris, you're you've been walking for about half an hour. Uh, you're about to cross the Seine, um, at one of the bridges, and you you spot behind you um this flash of movement and you stop and you see that Titu is following you. <laughs> Uh, has come out and upon being spotted will come right up to your leg and just kind of sit happily. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll reach down and like give him a little scratch and go whatever, assez vous. Yeah, <laughs> alright. Like, come on, let's go, you know, let's and let's go and see Pressy. Um, yeah, I will make sure Titu goes back home with Therese before we actually head out anywhere, but they, they right. can come with okay. me for the time. And two of you shall wander on. So, who wants to jump in next? I guess if we're going to Pressy's place next, you want to go, Jackson? Hey, we. Oui. I was thinking the same. Yes, so uh, Pressy uh, resides in a church with his adopted father, uh, Jacques Pressy. Um, his peasant family gave him up in order to raise, rear him up as a, as a, as a, as a of the cloth. Um, but he didn't take to it. That's why he took up arms as a soldier. But he owes, he owes his adopted father his upbringing, and so he's trying to pay that back by staying in the church and helping out. So you're and, good. Oh, sorry, after you. Oh, and Pressy is troubled, to uh, say the least. Just a little. What's troubling Pressy? Whatever's on his mind. Oh, uh, he's a good. He's a good. Uh, he's a good church-going lad, and um, the whole dead pope thing freaked him out a little bit. The, the Madonna with fangs biting a baby, all the blasphemous images. You return to a church, you know, a place that is filled with that kind of stuff. So you're looking around and you've probably got, um, you're probably a little worried about the whole thing. Um, uh, is your father, your father seems, it seems like an uh, early to bed, early to rise kind of guy. So I imagine that you can't speak to him the same night, but when the morning comes and he'll have prepared breakfast for you as he always does, um, are you going to bring up any of what you saw to him? Yes, I would like some fatherly advice as soon as possible. Seeing that you're troubled when you sit down and start, you know, picking at your food, moving your uh, one half of an egg and a moldy piece of bread into a sad face, uh, <laughs> he will 
uh, he, he will say, um, you know, Christophe, what, what troubles you? I can see that you're, uh, you, you do not seem well. My work has brought me to some dark places. Well, um, I'm sorry to hear that. And he kind of pulls in his chair a little bit. He leans forward. Um, your work as a soldier, it is, uh, it is dark work. There is bloodshed in your work. What's, uh, <laughs> Not what just that. Um, I'm afraid we are no longer fighting criminals or soldiers. And we are fighting blasphemers. I fear the devil has arrived in Paris. Uh, his eyes widen with, with shock. You know, this is a this is a big statement. Um, were you blasphemers? What what are you what are you talking about? Uh, who are, are there? Now his mind is probably racing, and I have a question for you, Jackson. Um, there are a couple of ways that uh, Jacques could live his life. Um, he may be one of the cloth who very much sees the nobility as the home of the church and mm -hmm. you know well if the nobility is blaspheming it's a little different um <laughs> he might have even read when you when you said we, we are fighting blasphemies he went ah yes yes good christophe is fighting the protestants at last um, <laughs> uh, so where is where is jacques is is he is he this the, the kind of you know modern true true believer? Um, and, and what what what? How do you think he reacts to this? Um, I I think he, I think for the most part he's subscribed to the mainstream belief that you know, the arist the aristos must be favored by God. That's why they're aristos, right? Yeah. That's probably where he started, but seeing the current state of Paris, seeing how he has to scrape together all this moldy bread to to get to the common folk who are starving and dying in the streets, um, maybe he's having a similar journey that Presti is about to ha that Christoph is about to have. Um, you know, that things aren't all that great in Paris. Um he in which case he leans in and he will say who is who is blaspheming did you did you catch what what happened it's um, a member of the aristocracy holding debaucherous parties um bomb uh, acts of blasphemy and treason against his holiness the, that last part in particular seems to affect him, obviously, a, a kind of a heightened level. Um, uh, he, he, he gets up and he, you, you live, you know, alone in a church with this man, but he still goes and he closes the door. Um, <laughs> and then he comes back and he sits down and, and, and in a very quiet voice. Um, and, uh, you know, the voice that he usually uses for, for sermons, but just so quiet this time, um, he will say... Um, uh, Christophe, if, if you are looking for a, a blasphemous aristocrat, you, you, all of them are blasphemous. You've seen the way this country operates. You've seen the, the, the food, the excess. I know you have been to Versailles before to meet your superiors. I, I, this, this place, it is, um, he kind of bites, bites his lip for a second. And he says, you are, you are a soldier of the king, but... It is my hope that you are also a soldier of God and that you understand that if you find a way to bear your arms against blasphemers, then you must take them. I understand. Um, Father, it seems that my duties are being broken. I thought I was loyal to France and I thought France was loyal to the to the church and I thought the aristocracy was loyal to both France and the church so where does that leave me sometimes uh, our lord takes a steering hand with disaster I sense dark things coming Christophe but I know that you will be at the forefront and uh I know that you will guide this country in the right direction. 
would you pray with me? Um, he'll sort of take your hands and, and um, both of you will lean over the, um, the table um, and quietly utter some prayers. Um, you weren't expecting such a bold move. And it almost seems like um, Jacques wasn't expecting himself to suddenly connect with you that way. He, he returns to very mundane matters once you finish praying. He starts talking about cleaning and before long he's off uh, doing his work for the day. What is your plan? And you would probably, um, around this time is probably when um, uh, Hugel would arrive um, and, and the two of you would meet and you could rally and begin your discussions. But first of all, uh, is there anything else you want to do in the church? Any steps you want to take before joining Hugel? No, I have plans for what to do Okay, when Hugel arrives. Um, you leave the church door to speak to Hugel outside. Um, the tattoo is darting around your legs. You take one last look at the... Uh, you know, the, the, the cross outside, and the, the stained glass, and then turn back to business at hand. The two of you, what's your plans? Bonjour, Prassi. Uh, you remember T2? Uh, oui. Bonjour, how do you do? <laughs> ça va bien, yes. <laughs> well, uh, I, I think you wanted to uh, read some books. Well, I... I'm not really sure exactly what we are up against. Um, this Comte is a strange being. So, if he is a devil, then it makes sense that we would look in holy atoms to find if there's anything that we can use to make sure that uh, the Comte is not just apprehended, but also imprisoned one way or another if you get my, my meaning jamie perhaps you refresh our memory we rolled like 50 sanity checks and succeeded all of them yes so at this stage do we think there's we anything you are perfectly aware that there is something off about the count specifically i think melon saw um, uh, saw him open doors with magic, and, I know. and um, I know. you you've spoken since you all experienced that strange violin chord struck, which drove you to your knees. There is something off here. Good More stuff. to the point, you've just all been able to kind of deal with it, get on with things. Not forever, but for now. May we? Uh, uh, well. Um, some of the things we saw, I think, uh, won't be explained in holy books. Um, is there a chance the Comte dabbles in witchcraft? Hmm. Perhaps then we're not... I think the holy terms would still be helpful to understand, but perhaps... Perhaps what we are looking for is less religious and more mythological? I realize that sounds ridiculous, but I cannot think of anywhere else to start except for stories of strange creatures that drain the, the blood of innocents or have strange fangs can can turn themselves into animals, can can open doors without touching them. All of this sounds frankly impossible. But here You're we saying are. you have heard of such creatures? <laughs> so I may have read Voltaire. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. Uh, you read very different books to me, I can tell you that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I have read books about them, but uh, I mean, there are mythology, there, there, there are stories, there are myths, stories, demons, devils, the usual stuff that you tell children to scare them to go to sleep, but I don't know, there's, there's similarities that concern me. So perhaps we start there, perhaps we look at the stories, perhaps the children's tales 
are more than just tales. Maybe they are cautionary. Maybe we can find something, a seed, anything that helps us understand what it is we are trying to stop and how we might stop it. I don't know. Je pas. Things we don't know, we don't know. You are Jenny, muted. You are muted. <laughs> oh dear, I was saying that we'd lost you. Excellent. So what I wanted to say is that the first point of call for you, <clears throat> if you want to start researching and diving into books, would probably be the Bibliothèque Nationale. So that was now really? open to the public. Uh, it's open to the public in the way that libraries were in that era. You know, um, it, they're not exactly expecting the rabble off the streets to come in and just start asking for books. Um, that said, Pressy, you are of the cloth. Um, you could probably uh, request some some tomes. So that would likely be your first port of call. Otherwise, you know, honestly speaking to to, to priests uh, is, is, is a standard way of going about finding knowledge. Um, do you have any avenues you want to pursue in particular? Uh, the Bibliothèque Nationale sounds like a pretty good place to start. I actually suspect, like, in downtime, because I think we've established that Hugo does actually like reading. <laughs> so I think there's a solid <laughs> chance that, like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, like, I assume the Bibliothèque Nationale would be very similar to the library, the, the major library we have here, and that it's a non-lending library. Like, you would go, you would read, but the books do not leave the actual, like... You are right, that tends to be the way it is done, yes. Yeah, so, unless there's something you think your father could help us with, I, I think the library is the best place to start. The bibliothèque uh, is the best place to begin. I agree. All right, so the two of you will break off and head towards the Bibliothèque Nationale. We'll jump away from your story for a minute and we'll move across to Malone. Uh, Melon, as you know, Renault, Renault, sorry, I always, the I always make that unless mistake. I've been promoted. <laughs> ah, surprise! You've been promoted. You, you're Capitaine. Still sergeant, but you are now Melon instead of it's like 007. You get the title or whatever. Bim, 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 bim. All right. Um, I have to. I have to wonder um, how Web Caption is doing with all these ridiculous accents and it's, and French it's not, names. It's not doing great. I'll be honest. Oh, it's not no. doing great. I'm watching it. <laughs> Oh, uh, sorry, everyone watching. We're doing our best to actually hang on. Change the language in web No, we've to tried that something. before. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, Renault. Uh, what is uh, tell tell us? You awaken. What's the go? Okay, uh, we got back late the previous night, but not unlike Pressy's father, I am also an early to bed, early to rise, except I guess late to bed, early to rise in this situation. Um, so when I get up, it's still like dark outside, I think. I also wasn't wounded, um, so I've cleaned myself up, but for the most part, I'm okay. We've seen some strange things, so when morning comes, I go and like sit on the bed of my two sleeping daughters before they wake, and I just take some time to sort of center myself, reconnect. Um, and then when Marguerite, my wife comes, I take her out into, we have like a little like kitchen. I think we have like a small apartment is kind of how I imagine. It's pretty basic. Take her out in a small kitchen and I've gathered this little twine bound bundle of documents. And amongst them is a red like braided ribbon which I pulled off one of my uh, flintlock pistols. And as I sit her down, I start to unwrap some of the envelopes and show, and I've, I've gathered like, it's a collection of praises or formal recognitions of my work as an officer, or even before then, as a soldier. And it's every commendation I've ever gotten for my work for uh, for France. And it's my slightly sad attempt to cement myself to the like the Aristos and to be like, look, this 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 proves, and I'll say to her, this proves that we are a loyal family. This shows 
that we have done everything we can for France. What I saw last night was awful, and what I need to do tomorrow could be worse. I'm worried, not for myself, but for you and for the girls, that if things go wrong, you need to be able to fend for yourselves. This shows, and some of it's like money, but a lot of it's just like little knickknacks and things. I hold up this little ribbon. I go, this is from when I met the king, the king. And, and, and he, he spoke to me. If you bring this to him, I am sure that he will recognize it and he will know that you were married to me and, and that we were loyal to France. And this will ensure that you will be cared for if something happens to me. Do you understand? This this money is not to go anywhere. This is our home, and this is where you will be safe. And if you if you take this to the captain, or if you take this to anyone, th this proves who I am and, and who who you are. Through that, do you understand? She seems. First of all, she seems she seems scared. You know, this is a big. Uh, think she she she's listening to you and she 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 you know the two of you have this very you know trust based practical partnership mm. um uh and and she's uh you know really um uh, you know try trying to figure out what the best way forward is as you're handing her this stuff she's kind of nodding but you are giving off the vibe that something terrible is happening you're telling her something's happening tomorrow she's expressed before she's worried she'll have to flee and she doesn't know if she can mm. and what you're giving to her is absolutely it's a it's a great weapon to have if people come knocking it's a you know oh look we're good but it's also what you'd take if you ran it's yeah i i think also it's not a great tool i think i mean renault's kind of blind so he, he definitely overvalues how important he is to the monarchy it's kind of crap it's a bunch of slightly pathetic documents like it's just scraps that he was thrown throughout his service and like the the, the ribbon is just a ribbon you know there, there's no chance anyone would recognize it it's he's got medals that you know were given out to everyone and sure he's served but no one of importance gonna recognize that i think once if milan or, or the, the captain for some reason leaves that's my tie severed i'm not gonna remember it. i'm not gonna be remembered no one's gonna care but renault doesn't acknowledge that renault's He's so blindly devoted that he, this is his way of securing his family. The thing is that other people had this same blind devotion. Mm. Can I get you to make a persuasion check? Yeah. Also, very big thanks to Grimaldi for uh, gifting us some wonderful subs. Thank you, Grimaldi. Success. Right, a, su a success. Um, so you you speak. Uh, you speak to her earnestly, and you can see the worry, you can see everything, but th there is some kind of, honestly, there's kind of like a, like a spark of passion in your voice, a true belief that is contagious. You did do everything for France, and the two of you do care, and there's, 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 there's love there too, you know? She trusts you, she loves this country, she loves you, and she nods, and she says... She says, yes, it's going to be okay. We don't have anything to worry about. Almost as much reassuring herself um, as she leans forward. Um, and and, and, and she'll, she'll sort of wrap everything up. She'll stand. Uh, she'll kiss you on the, on the top of the head. Um, and uh, she'll, she'll tell you to, to do whatever has to be done to, to make France proud and make France safe tomorrow. Very good. Um... You can return. Uh, she, she will. She, you know, will return and, and care for your, 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 your daughters as they begin to wake. Um, there is kind of this aura of sadness about yeah. the house, but it, but it's also like that kind of weird repression. We're not talking about it. There's an elephant in the room, but it's not getting. Discussed. I I leave shortly after that. I I would leave before daybreak and before the girls wake up. I. I cannot bring myself to speak to them in any sort of this might be a last discussion kind of way. Uh, so I just don't do it. And I, I, I depart. Yep. You 
step outside. Uh, the last thing you see is, you know, uh, you, you opening the door to the apartment. I imagine you can kind of see everything. It's a pretty small place. Is uh, Marguerite scooping up um, the, the bundle that you have and tucking it away, uh, looking for somewhere to stash it. Rock and roll. What is your plan today? Where are you going to be heading? Uh, we were told that we wanted to meet with, we wanted to just talk to Rago. Can I yep. say that the three of us have coordinated to meet with Rago in the early afternoon and we will meet sure. there. So sort of just after lunch. And then in the morning, I am going to meet with the captain. Firstly, to coordinate some of the soldiers and the things that we're requisitioning. And also, I do want to have a quick chat with him. Fantastic. Let's say you're going to meet Rigo in the in the kind of late afternoon because uh, these folks met at, at noon to go to the library. Sure. So it would just be a little later. But yeah, no that, that works. You head to talk to the captain and let's jump back to the library uh, where the collection of you have arrived. Uh, what are you going to be looking into? <laughs> I don't really know how you walk up to a librarian and be like, hi, uh, do you have any books on blood sucking leech people? Like vampires? I'll give you a little description of the, of the, um, yeah. of the Bibliothèque Nationale. And, 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 and essentially just, just tell me the topics uh, that you're going to sort of go for. The, the, this is a, you know, the Bibliothèque Nationale is, a, is, a, is an amazing place. It has been around, um, for already several centuries, uh, it started as kind of this private library of the king, and it has been open for the pu to the public for almost a for almost a century. Um, it is continuously getting bolstered by these large donations that are made by aristocrats and people bringing in books. And every time France has like a military victory or manages to loot another library, they bring it all and they dump it in. So it's getting bigger and bigger uh, bit by bit. And the sort of um, structure of, of, of French academia that is building up is starting to uh, coalesce around uh, the library itself. Um, the collection of you will be arriving. You'll be heading inside. Uh, it's, it's, it's a grand building. You'll probably go up to uh, a set of receptionists or scholars. You'll be able to hire translators or, or, or scholars who can help you find things. Um, uh, yeah. What's the topic you're going to be looking into? Myths? Was that the vibe? I th Unless Pressy has something else in mind, Hugel at least, I think he's going to lean more towards like folklore, myths, like fables, anything that, especially if like there's been things pilfered from other libraries, I doubt that would be stored under like actual historical fact and much more likely to be like lore of the people that we conquered that's definitely myth. Sure, mm. absolutely. Yeah, can't, can't possibly be true. Just to. Um, great. Just... And what about yourself? Well, I guess I'm thinking that's that's great. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, I'm thinking something. I'm thinking like more recent history of witches and what they've been up to in France in recent times, and what they get up to, and what they read, and what they study, and what they're into. You know what I mean? I'm thinking. I'm thinking straight up witches and Satanists and recent activity thereof and what to watch out for this is some heretical stuff Pressy. yeah uh, you are a priest and a soldier if there's I'm anyone the looking church. into this they'd be like oh good someone's finally going to take care of all the satanists written about in these books <laughs> that's what um, i'm thinking that's what i'm thinking okay um so uh first of all can i get you both to make a credit rating check oh, this geez. is going to determine whether you have enough money to hire a uh, a helper Someone at the you gotta, you gotta pay for them. No, no, no. It's open to the public. But oh, sorry. Yeah, you have to pay the helpers. They need to live. They're not sponsored. They're not paid by the library. Why? That's uh, outrageous. Miguel, no. Pressy. I thought. Oh, that's Ooh, real close. Eight points. Eight points. It's, it's not super critical. What it's going to give you is going to give you advantage on a library use check. Well, I suspect we're gonna need that. You might that. want that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, given my library is, use is the same as my credit rating. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so you, um, you, you, it's not expensive to hire one of these people, but you know, it's the French, it's the dawn of the French Revolution. You both have no money. Um, Pressy, if you'd like to spend eight points of luck, you can have literally found a coin on the ground. I it's will. Literally just... It's also um, partly I credit thought... ratings is like your like importance, right? Like a man oh, of the cloth coming in to say like, "Hey, help me out," and etc. 
The captain was going to get us anything we needed. But that doesn't include money. Pull a gun on him. The captain would probably say, why do you need money? And you'd say, to go to the library. And the captain would say, no. Book, That's fair enough. Book, books are for nerds. Get a cannon. <laughs> All right. Eight points of luck coming your way. I do right, get that. I can afford much. it. Um, so yes, that's a success on that trip credit rating. In which case, I'd like you both to make a library use check. Hugel, yours will just be straight, and mm -hmm. uh, Pressy, you can make yours with a bonus die. Just quickly, on the actual, like, oh, holy hell. Oh my <laughs> god, guys. Oh. Good lord. And I succeeded Fuck on it. the bonus die as well. <laughs> That's uh, insane! Holy fuck! Actually, actually. Three points what? of luck between no. us. One. I have 75 luck. Can I give you a single point to make that an extreme? Yes, you can. Brilliant! Uh, can I have all of the information? You've got. You need two points. I got one point. Huh? Give us the book. You got the six. <laughs> I got the five. Oh, sorry. It doesn't fucking matter. You can have. You can have two. I said I've got seventy-five. Ah, yes, oh my, my! Are you both goodness. taking extremes? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. please. For, for a grand total of three points of luck, yes, I think yeah, we've got ahead. I think we just like we absolutely want to know everything there is to know about this. Okay. Thing um, and how we stop it? That is pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, before I give you the very cool things that you're gonna find, uh, Dave, were you saying something? Yeah. I was just gonna say what we've actually seen of the Comte. I I don't think we've seen him do any, like. Like he's he's changed. He's clearly got some sway over people, and I'm pretty sure I saw him changing into different creatures. And we saw the misty stuff, and we saw the doors fling open. That's kind of it, right? Supernaturally, nope. what we witness. Nope. You nope. saw him um, kissing the neck of. Did someone we straight up see some he... some exsanguination? The first moment of of when you spotted him when the carriage was going past the catacombs, I think it was. Um, I thought I it had the, it the, be... the curtains drawn. No, uh, no you like caught a the side of his eyes and he was kissing the neck of her. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then there was a bloody handkerchief and then there was people with no blood left in them and like... I think it's it's more like a hunch on Hugo's yeah, part yeah. of being like... There is... If it's not like specifically... Oh, yeah, also the statue with, with the person biting the child and like... I don't know, there's just enough where you're like, okay, there's something about blood in here, whether something it's like... Something fucky to fuck. Yeah, yeah. So with extreme successes from your library use checks. Pencil time. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. First of all, Pressy, um, you so you dive into the occult history, which is what are they up to right now around Paris? Now you're not actually super interested in in what witches are up to. You're trying to look for Fen League. You will find some information about the early stages of kind of uh, rising occultism uh, in Paris. Uh, Paris is one of the occult's, you know, great cities uh, in, in sort of occultist lore, but its grand era is sort of around the Belle Epoque, which is after the revolution. Um, but the, the, the roots of that movement are going to start to be seeded you know, in, in around the French Revolution, uh, specifically, what you'd probably get onto is Freemasonry, and you would be reading about how the the the, the Freemason movements are, you know, uh, darting about, and they they came down from England, and now um, uh, these God, these Jesse. these Freemasons are creating secret organizations in which um, aristocrats who are Freemasons are equal or even subservient to commoners who are Freemasons. In what? fact, there is, a, there is a school of thought that says that Freemasonry, that was kind of one of the seeding grounds for the ideas of the revolution uh, because it was the first place where that kind of social structure was broken down. But you're so, not super interested in that. Um, there is an amazing, super cool story about um, uh, a, a, a uh, I don't have the names the, ca the characters' names, which you can all look this up. Um, there was a, I think it was, it, 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 there's a book called Ele Eliphas Levy in the French Occult Revival in which um, uh, a, a, a prophet magician was invited to court, uh, like a court dinner, and made a prediction uh, at the court. They were like, try and tell the future. We bet you can't, ha ha. And he said, within two years, everyone at this table will be dead. You will be hung. You will like flee in shame. You will da 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 da. And they all laughed him off. And then the French Revolution happened. So you probably read about that and go, oh, that's a bit spooky. 
but more importantly, you will find out, find out about Fenelik. Wait, you read about what the prediction, but not the because you read about the prediction. Yes, that like well, I mean, if you read a, a serious magician has predicted in two years a bunch of people are going to die. Yeah, I'd say he's a nut job. Blood. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, well, I mean, with Fenelik around, you know, is he a real magician? Who knows? Anyway, um, uh, you will find out about Fenelik. There is no insight into his operation, what he is doing, but there is evidence of him being part of these groups, interested in these groups. And what that is, is that is very clear evidence of blasphemy. More of it. Functionally, um, I'm going to say that you find it with this extreme success. You put together from all these papers enough concrete evidence to immunize yourselves against acting against Fenelik. This is like a proper, like, it's, it's not Milan's, sorry, it's not um, Renault's uh, gathered up papers. It is a proper, like, set of documents that will really protect you. Well, so there. that's good news. I've just gone out of focus. I do apologize. That's very embarrassing. <laughs> uh, but hey, that sounds good. Hugel, meanwhile, following myths legends and stories um you will find some evidence of uh you know the, the the vampire myth we talk a little bit about it you know there is some reference in voltaire uh, there is some reference going back into um you know ancient history uh you, what i think you will find is first of all you can now rely on your player knowledge of most vampire myths um <laughs> oh, and i and have a you, lot of those <laughs> you have kind of like i'm not saying which ones are true and which ones aren't but you've kind of heard all the bits and pieces and you're like oh, i i read somewhere that this happened and maybe this is a thing and and and, and what all this stuff you will also track very bizarrely tales that seem to point to Fenelik in particular mm. specifically tales that talk of this strange aristocrat uh you manage to track him back through the crusades uh you, you, you're moving through europe maybe even as far back as ancient rome make a sanity check okay what <sighs> eat it <laughs> oh my god stop critting on the sanity check uh you're fine with an extreme success you're fine Okay. I would hope Cheerio. so. I'm like, well, you're a weird fuck, aren't you? And that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, with that, a couple of hours have passed. Unless there's anything else you'd like to do, you'll leave the glorious Bibliothèque Nationale and head towards your meeting with Rigo. That you just... have organized to meet uh, Renault there. Grab this in my notes one more time. What did I find? You, you have found um, proper Re evidence yeah, um, uh, that like kind of legal rock solid evidence that would protect you from acting against uh, Fenelik. So if someone says you attacked an aristocrat, um, so is beyond... this linked to Fenelik or, or uh, this it's is just... linked to Fen this is like you find evidence oh of him of him being active in like witch circles and Freemason circles. Like, How is witches. it him? Like it doesn't have his name. Oh surely. no, there would be there would be like you you would have found like. Um, records of like the the interrogation of an arrested um, uh, you know blasphemer who said, "Oh, once uh, I went to a meeting, and here were the people who were there." Gotcha. Um, okay. Like cool. That. That's rad. All right, we got him. It's good. It's good. So off to the meeting. Let's jump back to Renault. Um, you want to go and meet Capitaine Manon? We. Oui. Okay, so you will have you head forward. Um, uh, Malin is still operating out of Versailles, um, so you will make the trip down. Um, it's where a, it's are we meeting Rigo? Is he in Paris? Or uh, we'll say you can get a, you can get a horse, and you can you can have left with enough time to to do the back and forth. Um, no worries there. But Rigo is um, in Paris. Rigo is in Paris. Yes, gotcha. Okay, no worries. Um, uh, and you will you will head out to the uh, you'll head out to the palace. So why why um, is Milan set up in 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 Versailles? Because it's um, isn't that that's where the nobility's plastered, is it? It's it's where a lot of the nobility are gathered around. Um, but it is all it, it currently the king and the queen are in Paris because they they went back there when their son died. But um, uh, so is it is it strange so that Milan's posted himself up kind of outside of like where things are kicking off 
Versailles has a whole area that is like prepared to support the administration and the power of the crown. So there's like offices there and everything like that. Um, if Paris was ever taken, uh, Versailles could be like somewhere, you know, you know, where, I mean, Paris is too close. If stuff got too hot in Paris and uh, like, as in the revolution and um, so what? Uh, the, the king needed somewhere to kind of like rule in safety, that would be Versailles could would be an option. So there, there is an established area there. It's not winning. Okay. All right. No worries. Uh, yes, I will. I will make my way out there then. All right. Fantastic. But um, but upon arrival, your 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 horse will be taken from you, um, given water, and prepared for the journey back. Um, you will uh, enter into uh, you will enter into uh, Malone's offices. He gives you a stiff salute as you enter. Sits down and says, "Captain, I trust your preparations nope. are going well, Sergeant." Uh, Sergeant. Yes, of course. Sorry. Uh, I it's all right. I'll accept the promotion. Um, <laughs> uh, I want to, I, first I coax it in like some, how are the troops going? Are we ready to go? Blah, blah, blah. We've got men. Cause we're kind of, he kind of put this on us to, to, to plot a bit of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I would say if we can, we'll have people going out like early tomorrow and then camping like a nearby woods or something. So they don't get immediately seen. So like, you know, outside, yep. hopefully there's rank and file with all their camping kits and, Trangiers and shovels and whatever else they need. Um, I don't know how much in how in detail you want us to go with the the, the plotting. Um, I suggest you camp in the Foy de Saint Germain, just nearby. So I yes, would, I, I would suggest the very same, sir. Perfect. Um, then I want to say when we when we went out to the uh, the Comte's grounds the other night. We did not just see blasphemy. Do you believe, if if you believe in God, Captain, do you also believe in the devil and his work? I believe that there are those on this earth that uh, do the work of the devil, and it sounds like what, uh, what Fenelik was doing was the work of the devil. So he's not saying yes, but that's yeah. more of a like, I believe that there is evil in this world. Captain, I am worried that prison or the asylum cannot hold this man. Sergeant, I, I, uh, I, I understand your hesitance, but we, we must be we must be realistic about the, the, the type of world that we live in. We, we cannot act directly against Fen Leek, not in the way that we, we, we wish we could. He cannot be put to death like a commoner. He, 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 being put into an asylum, he will, and as you said, he needs it. He will, he will be, he will be, uh, his life will be ruined. The, the, he will not be able to continue the excess that he expects. People will shun him. People will, um, that said, you can see that what you've said is bothering him. Can you make a persuasion check? Yeah. This will be, um, there'll be degrees of success based on what level of difficulty you get, I think. Mad. Um, and the degree of success for failure? Uh, the degree of success for failure is that, um, he, you know, he, he, he looks doubtful for just a second shakes his head, stands, walks, claps you on the shoulder and says, it's, it's, it's all right, Renault, you know, just, just, just do as you're told and everything will be fine. Would you like mm. to push this roll? It Not would be risking your, your, your relationship yeah. with, uh, with no. <sighs> you know what? Um, yeah, yeah, I think, I think actually, uh, as he says that, I think I cut him off towards the end of it. I stand up myself and I go, no, you have not seen what we saw that night. This man is, he has sway over people. He has powers that I cannot comprehend. Pressy and Hugel are now reading old tomes, trying to figure out what this creature is. You don't understand, Capitan. You did not see what we saw. This thing will take control wherever he is. He cannot be contained in some mere sanatorium. He will, he will rule there as he rules here. You must listen to me. This man must die. Push the roll. 
Mm. Cool dog. Mm. Okay. All right. So, um, you see, like, uh, Mel, as you see, you see Mel on first bristle, but it's not out of offense at you. It's, it's out of fear because he knows what you're saying is true. And, and once you've said it, once you, you, you said it, he, it can't be taken back. You've put this ugly reality on the table and that you know, neither of you can ignore it. Or at least not easily. Um, Melon leaves things silent for a long while. And then he says, Sergeant, you will organize for the soldiers to come in and you will arrest, you will arrest Count Fenlik. I suspect he will try and hide himself away somewhere. You and your men, your most trusted, will personally arrest him. While the rest of us secure the grounds, the staff, and any aristocrats in attendance. And he lets those words kind of hang. He is giving you some time alone with Fenelik. And with a regular success, I, I, that is all he is willing to do, I think. But you and your, 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 your faithful friends will be the ones to go in and to have that time to make something happen. He's not saying he'll immunize you, but he's saying he won't be there. Yeah, the could I could I make a... I'm getting a little touchy now because we've seen uh, loyalties shake. Could I make a psychology roll? And what I'm trying to glean... I have previously just blindly trusted the captain that he has our best interests at heart. I now... I would like to know if, if push comes to shove, will he kick us under the barrel, uh, under the cart... Uh, and sell us out sure. if necessary. Uh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Make a psychology check. His face is impassive. Every bit the soldier. Blind you faith could... has gotten us this far. <laughs> <laughs> Blind faith will get us through the rest of the way. Yes, Capitan. By your will be done. Thank you, I have, so I, have, I have soldiers to tend to. I'll head outside. He snaps a salute and dismisses you. Um... And uh, you can burst back out. You will spend a couple of you know hours preparing your troops, and then at last the three of you will converge uh, in Paris uh, at Doctor Rigaud's offices. Um, when you arrive, uh, sorry, first of all you arrive in the street outside. It's kind of like a it's a large apartment building, very well kept, very nice. He probably owns like what would fit like four families for for you know himself and his work. Um, what uh, are... Do the three of you have any conversation beforehand? How did your research go? Uh, it, uh, um, it had some well. results. Yes, yes. Quite okay. well. What did you find? Uh, I don't really know how to break this to you, Cap uh, Sergeant. Uh, we may or may not be dealing with um, something that... It, may or may not have been around during the Roman Empire? During the... You mean... Fenleek, specifically? Where? He's, he's, he's much older than he looks. How can that be possible? As I understand the old tales, um... Something can live for a long time on the life force of others. It is, um, we are not dealing with something that is entirely human. No, we are dealing with something much worse. Then it is as we, as we suspected. This creature needs to be killed as we said yeah. i met with the captain we will have soldiers to take the house but if they if they are successful then fenleek will be brought in chains and interred but my suspicion and it only grows the more that we know 
is that he will take control wherever he is placed. And he will grow in strength again, and soon he will be free. If he has lived so long, there is nothing that will stop him continuing to live. Unless we change his fate. The captain... I'm loyal to him, as are both of you, I'm sure, and I'm loyal to France. I have told him of our concerns, and while he cannot... He's a good man. He could, he could not tell us to... And Renault's kind of stalling a bit. He will give us time to act, but this is our duty. We have gone this far and we must carry the burden a little longer. We will be the ones to deal with the Comte and make sure that he meets his deserved fate. In, in that case, we have some extra provisions we are likely to need, Sergeant. What, what kind of things? Uh, I cannot say for certain, but uh, stakes of wood, uh, certain woods are better, but I'm not sure which ones. Holy crosses, bags of rice, moving water if we can find it, uh, garlic. Very what? expensive, I know, but it might help. Rice, garlic, I, I doubt we will find these easily. Wooden stakes, they're there anything will be... small enough to scatter on the ground. Apparently, they're very, um, I say, uh, anal attentive. <laughs> they really like that they cannot leave things unaccounted for. Uh, perhaps it's in stories is a way to distract them if we need it but we oh yes if we want to kill him we are going to need to stake him either through the heart or through the mouth and then we're going to need to take his head off oh, oh okay okay well we will we will do what needs to be done um garlic i doubt that we can find rice as well, but I have um, buckshot, which is small and carried in pouches, point. that will serve. There are stakes for trench work and setting lines in forests. We can requisition those as well. Um, are there... Are there ash trees in France? Because we're mm. going kind of through wooded areas, are we not? I guess we probably have to do, like, nature survival checks to find anything. You, you'd have to try and find one, yeah. but I'm sure you could. I mean, stakes and holy crosses should work regardless. I just, I just, some of the tales speak of certain plants being more effective than others. Um, After you, oh, sorry. Oh, no, Please. no, you're all right. Go ahead. I, you, you, I assume that this is kind of like the basics of your plan. You're kind of going in as you're, as you're having this discussion. Um, in which case, like, as you're mentioning these things, we need stakes, we need, you go to mention, uh, the obvious. You got to mention garlic, and as you mentioned that, you smell as you walk into Rigo's <laughs> office just the most heinous hit of garlic coming straight down the stairs. And you kind of, what the what what in the world? Um, um, uh, at which cooking. point, as you come as you come upstairs, um, Rigo will kind of wave and ah, uh, come in, come in. I, I um, he, t t his office is a kind of bear. It looks like he's moving out. Um, he is just exhausted. He's, his face is pale. Um, he looks like he hasn't slept, um, but he also looks resigned. And also probably literally he has resigned. Um, uh, not in a good way after, after the Dauphin has died. He'll, he'll sit down at the desk and motion for you to take a seat. You have to like drag chairs from other rooms to, 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 to get, he, he will apologize for the smell immediately and explain. I was thinking of any way I could um, help with your quest against Fenleek, and I remembered I attended a dinner once. Uh, after being served food, uh, he became incensed. Uh, he was railing, and he, he had to be carried out of the room. I had the same meal prepared. And he gestures. Ah, that is a... Uh, hey, bon. Merci, uh, Monsieur Docteur. Um, do you have any way of... Um, I think it is just the garlic he does not like. The meal is wonderful, but if you have any way of distilling garlic into a more concentrated form, I think that would almost certainly make him a little more than apoplectic with rage. Where did you acquire this knowledge? The Bibliothèque Nationale. 
Bibliothèque Nationale. Your soldiers can read, Sergeant? They can. Okay. Well, I can try and organize something, I suppose. Um, regardless, I, I'm at your disposal. I wanted to give you this weapon, gift, whatever. And uh, if there is anything else I can do to assist you, please let me know. I have already spoken to my colleagues at the... Uh, at the asylum, I have had them prepare a room, or they, though they do not know whom it is for. I believe some of them think it is for me. I will be very satisfied to prove them wrong. Yes, yes, very good. Um, I walk over to the. Is he? Are we on like a second level? Yep, yep. I walk over to the window and I look out on the streets. How many? How many people are out and about, just milling, that would have seen us come and go? Uh, it's Paris, so, I, I mean, you can make a retroactive check if you'd like, because I kind of pushed you inside. Just, uh, nothing significant. There's, like, a couple people out and about, yeah. right? It's yeah. not a crowd. Yeah, I just look outside and I say, what did you call us here for, Doctor? Only I, this? I called you, the, the, and he gestures towards the kitchen again. This, I think. The man is dangerous. He has... He has killed dozens in jewels, as I said. If you can disable him, stop him from being able to put a bullet or a blade through you. Uh, you, of the you, gift. you frown at the uh, good doctor's kindness, do you, Sajor? The good doctor is not in the court's graces at the moment, and I fear the longer we stay here, the more world will spread. We will accept your aid, doctor, if you still offer it, and we will do everything that we can to stop this man, but... We should go, and we should go soon. He, he looks a little hurt, but he he seems to accept what you're saying. He nods and he says, uh, I will have a, one of my servants let you out the back way and provide you with what you need. Sergeant, Very good. Uh, I, I can... May I have your permission to stay with the doctor and assist briefly with um, tinctures of garlic? I should be able to move unseen from this place afterwards uh, but i would like to assist the doctor as way of thanks he is doing us a great favor no? um i i want to talk i i like pull hugo aside just so that the doctor's not there um uh and i just say if you think that this is useful then help him but be careful we are playing several games here the political one may be the most important the doctor here was tied to the dauphin's death and if word gets out that we are still assisting him then no matter what comes in the following days there will be repercussions do you understand i understand that there are repercussions for doing awful things sergeant Come and go quietly from here. Get what you need, and then get out. That is an order. Oui, Sergeant. Very good. Um, uh, Brigo, Hugel will stay and assist you as long as, the, as long as you need him, and then he will take what you have and bring it to us. Take no more time than is necessary. Very good, Sergeant. Thank you. Um, he turns towards you, Hugel, and without further ado, the rest of you can uh, tear away. Um, I would like a stealth check from you, uh, Hugel. Uh, you will have the, the concentrated garlic powder will be made, so you can... Whoosh. Or just, like tincture, like literal liquid that we can like throw in and smash and sure. yep. scent. Because I'm, I'm going for like pungent smell as well as yep. like uh, concentrated something. You know? Easy. Both Fantastic. Ones. We're going to be walking around, like, the starving streets of Paris, and we're going to smell delicious. <laughs> well, actually, no. With, I'm hoping with a hard success. No uh, one's going to smell you me managed, at all. You keep it, you keep it locked away. Um, although, like, you, you see, you're, you're, whenever your dog gets close to you, it goes... Because it doesn't like the smell of, uh, of, of, of the garlic. Or because the uh, dog is Fenleek transformed and watching you. Nah, Titu was of too course. sweet for that. Hasn't tried to kill me in the middle of the night. Uh, oh yeah. Although actually, yeah, I I have a. Uh... Fenric was at Versailles when we visited, was he not? Yes. Which was in the middle of the day. So sunlight ain't gonna do shit, fam. <laughs> Another one off. So. It's getting towards the evening. 
I will assume the collection of you gather up what you need, meet with your men, and head out to the Forêt Saint-Germain near Poissy. Yes. I have deposited T2 with my sister. The dog is not with me. Okay. I oh, love him to pieces, dog. but he's a puppy, yeah. and I would like him to live until the next episode, please. The dog protests a little bit, but um, uh, Therese will, will, you know, you the don't puppy yeah, loves treat, treat Therese him right. He does. Much he does. As it he does. Me. Um, uh, and uh, you will gather up with your soldiers and you will head along your way. Um, are you bringing a cannon? If there I was mean, a, if, if they it even was had offered. a cannon nearby, I will requisition it. Um, in which case, uh, you will head along uh, to the Bastille, um, uh, where you will be introduced to the commander in charge there, who will uh, to chat with you a bit casually and have some of your soldiers come in and wheel out a large cannon with you know black powder and stuff like that. Um, uh, th- Slaps it on the side and says, "Yeah, oh, this is my 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 personal favorite of our cannons." Um, Jackson, can I get a cannon name from you? I was gonna say, "What's it called?" Oh, uh, Le Grand Fromage. The big cheese. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, but don't. Uh, uh, <laughs> that it is wheeled away, uh, and it is uh, you will you will all head towards the Forêt Saint Germain. Is there any last actions you want to take before heading over there? I would like to ask Pressy if we can requisition uh, a few crosses from his father. Uh, I assume they have, uh, yeah. like, sp- even like small ones attached to rosaries that are, uh, you know, used for people who come in and, and don't have one of their own that that might use one. Um, anything that can be spared of that nature. You will never know what was said. <laughs> what? Am I muted? It's Hello. Straight. It's, it's, I think. I think when your when your voice drops to a low level, we we lose. Well, that simply right won't do. I'll get a little bit close to the mic here. Uh, perhaps a few jars of holy water. I yeah, if it's an offer. They can. That, yeah, I do not think that would be a bad idea at all. Uh, anything holy. We're just we're just throwing things at the wall here, seeing what sticks. No, I think we definitely want to throw it at Fenric and see what hurts. Yes. 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 Uh does does the cat we don't have swords but the cap the the sergeant does doesn't he he's got a saber i have a saber yeah great keep that nifty and and handy i think we're gonna need it for the you know decapitation bit of this whole procedure yeah very important remove head from neck um, usually does the trick so uh the collection oh, yeah, of you fire <laughs> Gather up your things. Got you take uh, holy water from uh, from Jacques, uh, who who you know. Yes, fight fight the blasphemers. You you will do what must be done. And and um, uh, probably he probably goes like down. He pulls out some like old artifact that was given to his grandfather by a crusader, and it's like a big big uh, wooden cross, and apparently it's got like part of the true cross in it or something. And he gives it to Ooh. you. Like, this is, Right what? We'll keep you safe. Uh, th- th- every church has one. Heck yeah. Still, that, that's a big gift. Like it's right? a, it's a gift. Yeah, it's even a even if he believes it, right? So, like that's important. So... That's massive. What uh, stats do I use for that table leg? <laughs> uh, no, it's it's just a chunk of wood that you would wear around your neck. But this is oh. this is more it, it, even amongst the people of of um. This is like how every, uh, you know, every pub surrounding a baseball stadium has, you know, Babe's Roof home run baseball from, yeah. from this period. Yeah. They all kind of know it's not 100% true, but it's important to them. This is really your father kind of giving you something. This is him. This is very much like a you're becoming a man kind of uh, pressy. He gives it to you. So the fun you. thing, and I don't know how it works in Call of Cthulhu, but at least in Vampire the Masquerade, it actually doesn't matter what you have on you it is your belief that drives whether or not you personally can drive back a vampire you don't kill so, vampires with this you kill them yep. with this so like if you have to <laughs> stake, faith, stake to the heart <laughs> and you that's just it. gotta believe you gotta yep. follow and i feel like if press is like oh my god this is like the true cross yeah you you're gonna be fine <laughs> oh yeah my, my my father's never told a lie in his life <laughs> so i think we're good in which case, um, you will have, you will gather around uh, in the Foyer de Saint Germain. Uh, you arrive pretty late because you spent the day, uh, you know, quite active 
uh, the soldiers will come. You'll set up a camp. You'll stay relatively well hidden. You chose to camp nearby, which it states in the book. If you do, no one from Poissy uh, spots you. So, so well done. Uh huh. Um, and as night falls, the following day, you wake up around you know noon because you, you you slept in a little, um, considering you arrived so late. Prepare everything, and before long, you'll be ready to head to the Comte's manse. If there's any final preparations, now is the time. We're going in like in, in the evening of the next day, right? Uh, yes, but it is now it is now the next day. So you arrive at night of Sat so you arrive Saturday night and you sleep till like Sunday morning, and it is Sunday evening that the party is. Okay. Uh, I think the only other thing I have on my list of shit that might destroy vampires outside of stakes, crosses, holy water, garlic and the like. Gun. Uh, and silver bullets. That's gonna be my trick. Ah, uh, no, that's werewolves. I don't. Oh. I don't think silver does shit to vampires. Not really. I mean, it does stuff to demons and like devils and stuff, I believe, but not necessarily vampires. Uh, although maybe, but I don't think we're gonna Could be, be able a to devil. Find... Look, it, there's a solid chance that we do not have enough money to get silver bullets. Just FYI. Um, but the only other one is running water, which uh, I guess begs the question: Are there any rivers, creeks, natural water? things nearby i mean they're there i mean there's a sen but you know they're not super nearby okay um, you know the like sorry you know the like you call someone up and you say is your fridge running gag i wish to pen a letter <laughs> to, address to the, the one good comte fenelic and i say uh, hello sir is your water running <laughs> and does that affect you <laughs> you boom. go and fetch it boom <laughs> served uh yeah, no, just just like natural formations of, of running water. Um, but if no, then uh, not in particular around around the the Comte's, uh, manor. No, no, I'm afraid because he's um, avoiding fact, I'll a roll it. A luck check for me. Sure. Success. Yeah, they can dig. They can dig a trench. If divert the stream. We're not no. diverting a whole <laughs> river straight in his front door. <laughs> Also, it's not so much like it's not so much a we can kill him with it as a if we're in trouble and we can leg it over the other side of the stream. It gives us like a safe place to. That's fine. Recoup. Let's do that. Divert the stream straight across his you know front 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 garden. Last time and then you were we just jump dresses. over. This time you're diverting streams. Uh, <laughs> every time we go to the Confen Leaks Manor, uh, Pretty gets up with some mischief. I think it's got legs, personally. Um. Four when he's in cat form. <laughs> Give me Man. twenty good men. I'll get you a stream. <laughs> uh, so the night falls. Captain Mellon is there with you. Um, he has he has left the organization to you, Sergeant. So you have put together the men generally. Can I get an intimidate check or a different charisma skill that you have done as general leadership? Yep. Uh, persuade. Persuade's fine. Yep. Yep, yes, so the, the men are rallied, they are ready. Um, you will have set them in the woods around the back uh, of the manor, you know, approached quickly, um, and you will be you will be waiting for a bit. They're also um, on, like, crowd control, because this is a party, yeah? There's going to be a bunch yeah. of aristos. They're going in, they're arresting everyone they see, and they're shooting guards as necessary. They're to secure the area, and then the three of us are going to break in and, and deal with the... You know, we're gonna, we'll, be like, we'll handle the comps. If you see them, don't engage, like... Just keep him inside and, and fed him away. Shoot him if you um, have to. Have fun. Have you're fun waiting. That's the most important thing. You know, oh, like, I, let's I, go out there. Let's course. have a good time. Murder some Arisa. You'll have slices. spy glasses. Um, and and the, the collection of you can, can will have, like, set up a little bit closer and will be handing the spy glass between you along with Capitaine Manlon while you wait for the carriages to arrive. They begin to come in in drips and drabs. Um, but, you know, it's, it's very slow at first. At first, it's just the deliveries... Uh, or just before you know um, the the sun starts to set, um, the, the a bunch of staff come through and they they have a bunch of animals with them, like just um, uh, you know you know this horde of sheep and lambs and and all uh, cows, deer. Um, they take them around the back of the um, the 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 house. Um, you do recall that the name of the this event was the the that fifth is anymore the 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 party of the animals. Um, 
just as night starts to fall uh, and your men are getting ready to like, you know, the aristocrats will be arriving soon. You hear this like unholy screaming uh, coming from behind the, uh, the, the house. Um, you are a vivandier, uh, Hugel. You'll recognize this to be the sound of the animals being slaughtered on mass. Um, as you watch, um, they take the corpses of the animals and they dump them in the garden at the back, making no pre- time to pre- like prepare them for food. They just leave them. However, the corpses are all, all have their heads removed. When the aristocrats' carriages start to arrive, and they do bit by bit, um, they come out, you know, they're, they're excited, they're in these full wonderful garbs, and you see Fenelik, um comes to the door personally to greet them all. Um, they walk forward and these doors are thrown open. You can still see uh, this Pope figure uh, suspended in the, uh, in the doorway. As the, the, some of the aristocrats are shocked by, shocked by that, but they are even more shocked when Fenelik stops them from coming in and presents each of them uh, with the head of one of these animals. He demands that they remove their wigs and their hats and place the heads of the animals upon there. Saw that one coming. <laughs> what the fuck? Yep. So, some refuse, but their protestations, you know, become weaker and weaker as Fenley gazes at them. They each place the carcass of the animals upon their head. They go forward. Where inside you can see troughs filled with wine have been set up. They deep their heads, drink deeply, and then vanish deeper into the manse. What do you think okay. was going to happen with Le Fed des Animaux? I thought they were going to eat them. I don't know, like a petting no. zoo? <laughs> yeah. It was either going to be like they were dressed, it was going to be some kind of masquerade with like, as soon as you said like there was a group of animals, I'm either like Fenric's in the animals and is trying to escape, or, or, as soon as you said decapitation, I'm like, he's going to make them wear their heads, isn't he? Gross. He's gonna, yeah. Right. I think so, we see we see Fenley go inside and a number of aristos have come in. We wait until there's a lull in entrance. Like most people have arrived. We're not going to be disturbed by another ring of caravans coming in. And then give like a little like a, a, a whistle, which is echoed through a few of the other parties. And then soldiers begin to clamber over the walls. Absolutely. Get, get this madness done. However, first I will need a sanity check. Ah, nuts. There's weird stuff going on tonight. This is just one of many Hasn't stopped us so things. far. Well, oh, a failure! <laughs> Did it's a, oh, oh. Yeah. Ah. all right. Uh, those of you who failed, uh, just take a single point of sanity and remember to track very carefully what your indefinite insanity uh, mark will be. Uh, hey, I'm James, now on sixty-nine sanity. Yes. Nice. Um, are there more guards? Given that we were kind of seen last time we were here, like, does this look better protected? It looks like it is. It looks like it is protected. Um, maybe a little better. You can definitely see more active guards. It doesn't look like they've like brought in a garrison. You, you and your troops. His will still hubris will be his downfall. Yeah. He should have fled. Sir, Sir Jean. Oui. I am concerned that this looks all too easy. We have our we orders. Have- there's nothing more that we can do we need to act tonight he is here this is our chance he is bold he is brazen it will be his undoing uh, we have orders uh, and good reason to take down Fenelik Um, what about the rest of the party goers are they just as guilty no no they will be arrested they will be dealt with by the courts that is not our jurisdiction the Comte is our target let the soldiers deal with everyone else or if that you give that whistle you mentioned, and soldiers will stream over the walls and begin pouring into the mans. It is righteous. It is honestly yeah. righteous. You you prepared there you, the ca- a cannon fires, but it is just to scare people at this point. And your soldiers will rush in. There are some uh, of the um, guards who throw up the fence, who draw cudgels. The servants stop and just sort of gawk mouths open uh, like like fishes. And as you rush inside, you begin to yell, kicking in, uh, kicking in doors. 
howling, shouting. Um, you see inside, you know, just the complete scene of debauchery. All the people acting like animals. In one room, you see that there is a there is a sheep uh, who is lying on the ground, going like ba as people dressed as wolves like bite them. Um, like it a is real sheep. Chaos. Like no, like a person, a person. in a sheep, in a Ooh. sheep head. Um, uh, there is there are people dressed with like deer heads on and as people run in some of them like become deathly embarrassed and like drop what they're doing and start to stutter desperate for excuses others keep acting like deer and start to like sort of skittishly prance away through the uh through the um this madhouse it's utterly insane all of you pass by the statue of the pope and gets that's just not a statue getting closer the corpse that has been dressed in pope's garb getting garb getting closer you can see that it is a skinned body that is being sort of mummified and set in place um like some kind of grotesque art piece um with your with your orders uh laid in stone uh the house will be swept through can i get each of you to describe sort of a scene of what you're doing during this assault as you as as as, as you're rampaging through Okay. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm at the, the front, but I've, I've drawn my saber and I'm doing a lot of waving it about and pointing people towards things. I think as soon as we get inside, I did succeed the, the sanity. I think it's, I've, you know, I'm not treating this as normal, but it's like, these are people that need to be corralled. And if they want to pretend to be animals while it happens, all the easier for them. So we start like, I, I'm directing soldiers to like herd people into rooms and sequester them away. Do we need to be concerned about like the ones wearing wolf heads next to the ones wearing sheep heads or dogs or whatever? Or are they it's gonna some- behave? Yeah, you've got to take one out and then bring another one back. That's yeah, the trick. The uh, yeah, the, the part that you, genuinely, some of them do continue to behave like that, but now there are soldiers in the room, and if they do, they get a stern whack yeah. with a gun, and they tear off their heads and say, you maniac, and they, they kind of regain yeah. themselves. I, I think we, like, kick over the troughs of wine until it, like, spills out across it, and when we go in and that Pope thing's there, I, I, I yell at some passing private to cover it, um and you know like let's get this shit under control there's enough bullshit a curtain is torn down and placed over his holiness uh to preserve his modesty um what about the rest of you chrissy is inclined to stay near le grand fromage <laughs> at the back yep which is uh, being wheeled forward <laughs> yeah but you know watching the watching the scene unfold and um you know, I guess it's, it'd be up on a hill somewhere, so it's got a good angle. And Percy does like being up on a hill where the uh, eyes can eyes can see him, uh, because he strikes quite a, a handsome, striking figure, and uh, that seems like a good place to inspire the troops. And especially when the cannon goes off, everyone's going to look up there and see this uh, young, strapping soldier waving the uh, you know waving the colours, and uh, maybe it's all going to be fine. Percy. Maybe a sing a what? check, a, a battle song, check? a rousing chant uh, to, to drive the troops to action. Maybe. I mean, once the cannon goes off, you probably won't hear anything. So perhaps appearance <laughs> just to see what kind of figure uh, he cuts. Sing check. Genuinely sing give me check. a sing check. <laughs> <laughs> very, okay, yeah. very good. Uh, yes, we do hear the people sing. Perfect. You, you, are, you are chanting, you are howling. There are people, you know, for France, for justice, uh, for God. Beautiful. What about Bain yourself, Liam. Hugel? Hugel takes all of this much more seriously. Hugel is going to use all of the commotion to stay out of sight and to make very, very certain that if Fenric appears, they will notice him. All right. Make a stealth check for me. I succeeded my last one, didn't I? Hey. Brilliant. You remain unseen, moving quietly through the halls, like, you know, darting in between soldiers as they go, past Renault as he, you know, herds yeah. people into rooms. Just um, to, to be clear, there is a stake, like, in the back of my like belt underneath my jacket um i probably like passed out some of the garlic to the others but i have like one vial on like a leather strap around my neck like a glass vial just like there 
Yep. If that's totally, okay. totally, totally fair. Um, you will be able to go through the entire house, and you do not find Fenwick. Oh, God damn it. Ever, I know where he you is. You do not go into the basement. I know where he and is. And before long, um, as the house is secured, uh, be like the final steps are being uh, done. Um, no one has gone into the basement yet. Um, someone, one of the servants, will have yelled as you know, as as a as a uh, soldier that slams up against the wall and says, you know, where is the count? And he gestured helplessly to the basement. Um, Capitaine Malon will rally, you know, the soldiers, secure the place, um, and he looks towards you just once. Uh, uh, Renault with like meaningful eyes and then strides away. The three of you now stand at the top of the basement looking down. Sergeant? Oui. It is deep, it is far, and he is down there. Okay. Uh, I grab a torch from one of the walls, tug it out of the brazier, and I'll light it. Fucking kick open the door, draw my pistol, have at ye. Uh, I I descend, and I will I will take descend. the lead unless anyone else wishes for it. The three of you descend down, down, down into the depths through these staircases that seem to go far, far, far underground. Is it just the three of us, or do we have the other three of the same troop? Would you like to bring the other three soldiers? Look, uh. Uh, just, just wondering, out of curiosity. You could have them in like call range, but not like like you have yeah, them upstairs. Yeah, let's leave them at the top. Him. Actually, let's leave them at the top of the stairs, making sure no one comes and goes, so he can't escape yeah. easily. And ideally, yeah, if we if it's not too low down, they'll be able to hear us if we call for for assistance. Excellent. Cool. But they haven't seen the comp. So generally, I think in character, my concern is if they see something and panic, they'll just be another. Like the three of us can handle it. Anyone extra just risks panic and chaos, and then we might lose him. He might slip out. Before, exactly, that's a very good point. Um, you leave the other three at the top of the stairs. Before long, you're at the bottom as you emerge into this rough hewn torture chamber, Fenleek's cellar. Mm-hmm. I've moved you all into a screen. In oh, no. Movie. So you can I wish I hadn't done that. A long, rough hallway that extends in front of you, straight, straight down. Along either side of the hallway, there are these occasional grates, iron bars. Um, you look uh, ahead, the hallway opens up into a larger room. Um, and I'm assuming you're going to start moving forward. Bit by well, bit. What's behind the bars, the grates? Well, you can't, I mean, you can see where your, your characters are. Would you like to move up to them? Correct. All right. You move up to the first set of bars and you begin to move through. Um, behind each set is scenes of, you know, horrific amusement executed by uh, Fenleek. There are bodies hung up on, on, on racks, on wheels, on all kinds of various torture implements. Um, uh, one of them is in a bridal gown. One of them is in, you know, is, is dressed as a, as, a, as, a, as a member of royalty, um, you know, a distant cousin or something. Um, one of them you realize with horror, um, sort of hanging and, and presumably still alive is the man who was dressed as Marie Antoinette at the party a couple of days ago. Um, he appears to have been partially flayed and is missing most of his skin. A chaise lounge has been set out in front of him so that the Comte can recline and enjoy watching the horror. Uh, witnessing all this, you all need to make a sanity check. This is truly yeah. the, the most vile uh, thing that you have seen. That could be worse. Good God. The, the success is coming in hard and fast. Um, even with a success, you are all still going to lose a point of sanity. That's fair. Two down, eight to go. <laughs> Four down. Um, uh, it, it doesn't look like these place, these, these, these areas have anything more in them than, than you know, the, the dead, basically, or the dying or, or, or and torture devices. Up ahead, though, you can now see this larger room at the end of your vision as you sort of get start to get towards it. Um, and it opens up into um, a, 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 a kind of... It, look, it, it looks like the corridor ends here. Um, and you can see looming inside various shapes. 
This appears to be the end of your journey. Any final actions? Well, so no far we've seen another way where he could escape through, right? Unless, you know, supernatural stuff, but yes. no, like... Hidden tunnels in the cells? No, none that were obvious. You can make a spot hidden check if you would like to, ex like, explicitly look for one. I've heard worse ideas. Uh, just spot. Yeah, just take a look past as we go past. All right, someone make a spot hidden check. Okay, press I have done it. Um, so if there is one, you, you peek in through the bars just a bit. Uh, if there is one... Um, thank you very much. It, there is, it is not obvious. Um, uh, each of them are, uh, seem normal, seem like there's no way. It's just rock. Great. Good. That's what I, you like to hear. I would like, if I may, to make a spot hidden, but for a different reason. Sure. <laughs> what are you looking for? I'm looking for Confenric in any of his forms. Okay, make a spot hidden. Good uh, thought. I also would like to have one of those vials of holy water just just here, you know, just because I've also discovered, similarly to monkey, my throw is not that bad. Ooh, hey, very good. good. It's a useful skill. Yeah. Holy water or garlic water? I mean, if I can make a tincture of the both, I'm into it. But, I think that adding you know. garlic to holy water would deholify it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go. I feel like the holy water is like the first step and if that doesn't work because we don't know that works the garlic is like we know that at least makes him very unhappy so <laughs> you know Come on, that's what we're trying to do here we're just trying to ruin his day success on this okay point. settle for it at this point there is nothing down here you see no rats you see no wolves you see no uh, strange beasts nothing but a shadow up ahead of you in the room the shadow of a figure. Is it time to continue on? All right. I mean, uh, do you call out to him? I, I am following what the sergeant wants to do at this point. Uh, I'm like, I, am the, back. I think I'm holding a large torch up. So the, anything that can say our presence is announced. We aren't being quiet. Um, but I'll motion max the two of you actually maybe and just make like a, you know, stay low gesture. Um, mm -hmm. And I will say, there's no reason for him to know how many there are. Um, and then I will hold it aloft, stride forward towards him, and call out, Comt! You walk forward, arriving just at the edge of the room. As the rest of you stay a little further back hidden, can I get stealth checks from those of you attempting to remain hidden? And I'm aware that it's kind of a one-way thing. <laughs> Hard to uh, it, it, So you're just kind of a little further back. Someone would be aware if they saw you. Um, uh, Pressy, although it is pretty dark. Uh, Hugel, you are, are properly whoosh, smoke in the wind. I am staying low, following orders. Ahead of you, you come into this room and what you see, first of all, uh, this room is clearly, it's like a study. There are two tables in the room, uh, but in its center is a porcelain statue that stands tall. It is immediately disconcerting. It's made of perfect wrought craftsmanship. Its face is distorted. In it, you see, uh, maybe you see the king. Maybe you see yourself. Maybe you see someone you love. Uh, who, who do you see, uh, Renault? Uh... As it shines back. If it's if it what is it like a figure of, of power is that the perception? Oh, yeah, any anything could be one of your daughters. It could be the face is strikingly uh, whatever would unsettle you. I think the the captain, the one that you know sent us down here, and in theory is still loyal to us. Ooh, fantastic! The shining face of Captain Malon for a second in this perfect porcelain statue. There is red blood that looks like it is squelching out of the base of the statue as if it is bleeding. It's one of the weird things in the room, but it's not the most horrific. At the back, covering the entire wall like a, a mosaic, like a uh, some kind of artwork, is a collection of broken bodies. Dozens, maybe a hundred corpses, each broken into the shape of letters in some strange language you don't understand. There are two tables in the room and they are covered with scrolls in long flowing scripts. You stand here for just a moment, kind of gazing at it all. As the light shines, all of you will see this. I want another sanity check from all of you. 
And no sight. The the silhouette we saw was the statue, not the count. It was the statue, not the count. Shh, fucking. And good God, stop getting extreme successes on the sanity checks. Have another. Two of them. What, oh. what the hell is this? Um, and Ugel is fail. the one with heaps of sanity. Yeah. Ugel, uh, this is going to be a D4. Okay. You've got a despair, though. Ooh. Dangerous. I will get you. And as you're standing I mean, here watching, <laughs> uh, you hear or feel a voice answer your call, Renault, and it says, yes. And suddenly mist, smoke, fog pours down from the ceiling, just rushing through and whipping around you. Um, the two of you are out the back, so you will need to make, uh, not need to make constitution checks, but uh, Renault, as you have stepped oh, into the room, no. I want a constitution check from you. What have we uh -oh. done to us, Jean? Uh-oh. A Big hard oh, oh, oh. In cough. Uh, but you manage to hold yourself. You draw out your sword, uh, pistol in one hand, whatever setup you would care to uh, entertain. The other two, you reach for your weapons. Down in the bottom is the, f s uh, the smog, the smoke, the fog roils around and rushes. Suddenly it vanishes and looming in front of you, tall with great dark eyes and a long thin blade in one hand is Kant. Fenleek. And we'll leave the session there. Oh. Piece of shit. I'm gonna stab okay. this dude. I'm gonna shoot him. We're gonna throw a bunch of seasonings on him. He's gonna have a bad day. I mean, make sure you stake him at some point. But yes, I did have a vial of holy water ready to go. <laughs> so that's. I'm also gonna try shooting him the most. That's gonna be priority number one. That tends to work I on most even things. Know. I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna shoot him. I'm gonna shoot him I a mean, lot. Shoot him a bunch. I'm just gonna ditch holy water on him. Right. At the same time. Oh, uh, and Pressy, you, you brought the cannon down here, right? <laughs> I was actually going to say, <laughs> can I leave the cannon, like, pointed no. at the top of the stairs? We, we, no. we could have wheeled you it down. Not. Okay, all right. Well, it just seems like you didn't... We, I messaged all Jackson right. privately, and we did coordinate Oh, that. you did? Oh, what I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> oh. Um, thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Oh, man. That was the uh, fourth episode of Reign of Terror. Join us next week for the confrontation with Kant Fenleek and to see what happens next. Thank you once again to uh, Sirenscape, to Roll20, and to Web Captioner, tools which we use to improve our games. And thank you to the wonderful cast. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Art. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you, James. Thank, thank you, Jimbo. And Thank you, audience. We'll see you next week. Ooh. Remember to check out the Call of Cthulhu Classic Kickstarter. Remember to subscribe to us on the Chaosium YouTube channel. It helps us out a lot. Follow us here on Twitch, and we'll see you next time. Also, it's good stuff.